Okay, um, continuing on, I have something running in the background that's using up uh, a lot of uh, system resource, but there should be enough to encode this video in a small box, hopefully, and I won't have to do it again. Uh, the next file, uh, since I've numbered them, should be four, I think. <clears throat> a header file uh, now I was just looking at this file and uh, it's actually one that's going to be generated so I'll rename this to something that won't get overwritten Look inside here. Oops. Gotta have a file. Okay. Now uh, there's something called stub files uh, that will be used to build the client and server uh, bits separately. And this is uh, not formatted right. I can do that. Okay, well actually it helps me to read through it and know where I am. After defining the client-server interface, which we've done, I think, you usually develop your client and server source files. Yeah, so that would be the part where we would write down, you know, instead of hello world, something that does something useful. And next, use a single make file to generate the stub header files, and that's this thing, or one of them anyway. Uh, compile and link the client and server applications, so those are separate things. However, if this is your first exposure, yes it is, to the distributed computing environment, you, it's not really my first exposure, but I don't remember anything about it. You may want to invoke the MIDL compiler now to see what it generates before continuing. Good enough. That automatically installed. You know that. When you compile these files, make sure that hello IDL and hello ACF are in the same directory. And the following command will generate the header file this is hello h and the client and server stubs okay so underscore s server and underscore c means client obviously so here's the command and the output will be these two files Uh, no, three files. Client, hello. <clears throat> Server, hello. Dot C. Not using CPP, so it doesn't matter. Uh, notice that hello h contains function profile. We have to build it first, so we'll do that first before continuing. So let's just try it. MIDL hello IDL. And um, the uh, application configuration file. I suppose this is not what we want. I could have done this in one step. I just put it in this. One, I'm going to get rid of all the comments. 
and just leave this bit. This is comments. There's nothing else in there. So we have hello IDL and hello ACF. Presumably that's what we need. And the command was right. Let's see what happens. A bunch of things are happening. <laughs> okay. Well, well, as it's as uh, we were told. Well, let's go back to that text. Um, notice that hello a. This was generated just now, right? Um, contains function prototypes for hello cross. It should. Uh, what is this? Step us by. Uh, this syntax highlighting would be helpful in here. Okay, there's. Now, I didn't mention these before, I don't think. But, uh, that doesn't come up till later. But there, these functions uh, were not defined or declared anywhere in the two files. If I open those files, what we started with this. That was the IDL. There's this, okay, that has basically nothing. And this, which has the, these include files. <clears throat> and as far as our contribution, just these two, right? And, and this part. However, hello age uh, has, or here's hello pro. Taking an uh, unsigned character, pointer, and they're shut down. So these are C declarations. And here it's, it's made, it uh, declared a handle and gave, gave it the name. Hello underscore uh, I, I guess for interface. I don't know what the F stands for, or maybe IF for interface, interface handle, and these externals, these externals are handle, interface handle apparently, no procedure called interface handle, hello, okay, one for client and one for server. And this is okay. Look at they're not using Pragma. Pragma once. Nobody uses Pragma once. I don't understand why. You know, they invent this wonderful Pragma once thing, and and nobody uses it. And look at this. They've even given this with a number. <laughs> you know. You don't need it. You don't need a number, but maybe in some versions of C++, you can't just define something without giving a definition. Uh, and the reason nobody can use Pragma once, of course, is for compatibility with other com other compilers, older compilers, and so on. So it's been just obliterated from from the world. It, it can never be used ever. Oh, no, 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 this looks like another private one. <clears throat> Required something version. 
that is pertaining to these include files and then outside of that okay I don't know if that this is a version check we get a pregnant error now here is a, a C style pragma once. Those are those two, the same header files that were in the IDL, I believe. No, but they're the same names, aren't they? One's.h and one.idl. Okay, extern C, <laughs> more pragma ones, Our two functions, the handle, uh, <clears throat> two more handles, no more additional prototypes, and that's the load ID. Contains the prototypes, true, and forward declarations for two memory management functions, true. Allocate and free, user. User allocate, user free, and you will provide the two functions in the server application. Makes sense. Just like in Tom, right? Uh, bonafide or fake, the allocating takes place on the server side uh, typically uh, if data were being transmitted from the server to the client by means of an out parameter you would oh I see you would also need to provide these two memory management functions on the client side I see I see so an out thing like uh, in our case, in, in one case uh, when we wanted to read a file uh, from the internet, we made this I made this fake fake uh, HTTP client um, object that allocated. You passed in a pointer, <coughs> it did the allocation and passed you uh, back your pointer handed in uh, which was memory you could read but uh, you wouldn't have been able to free it you'd have to give it back for freeing in this case this is more general if the, if the client if the server I should rather is um, let's say on a different computer you know on the internet that you discovered on the internet and you want to retrieve a string, a name or something, then you can't read any kind, any kind of memory allocated over there and so you have to be able to provide an allocation routine on your side to hold the return value. Note the definitions for the global handle variable definitions okay for that and the client server interface handle names we guess that the client and server applications will use the interface handle names in runtime calls okay fair enough at this point you don't need to do anything with stub files so look at them. Now here is this here is just a. Uh, it's just showing us what, what we would have got, and then we do get it. Here it is. Always generating. Uh, mine has a date. This one doesn't. But um, well, mine's quite a bit different. Is it? No, his this one does have a date. Nineteen ninety six. No, this one either it's today or 
that's today, okay. So it's the time of generation, not the time of creation of the template. That template probably hasn't changed since 1996. Uh, so all this is the same. Crag no warning, blah, blah, blah. Shut down handle key. Is it the same exactly? Not exactly in terms of carriage returns. Uh, and before the end if oh no, it's the same. Okay, there don't appear to be any substantial differences except uh, I thought I saw the a pragma warning. Oh look, pragma warns. <laughs> What's the point of putting it in there, right? If it's not defined, then it won't use that. And so you still got to do, right? You still got to take care of the case for that this isn't true. So you, you, that doesn't amount to getting rid of, of these if death things. This, which has to have a corresponding end if somewhere. Probably right at the bottom. Can't tell which is which. It's completely useless. Right? Why have this here? Uh, Okay, uh, actually, I can see those differences. You could try file compare. Anyway, how about these two files? What is this client server? Okay. Uh, Disable some warnings, unreferenced arguments, redefinition to static. Don't know what this deal is. I could turn these on and see what they are. Include string H. <coughs> Include hello H. Here are some structs. A short followed by something called format format string size now this is a grid right it certainly looks like one it might not be a, it's an rpc syntax identifier but it looks very similar to a grid uh, just want to see. Oh, oh, I can still pull it up if it's the same number of uh, <coughs> digits. That accounts for that. That accounts for that. That. So it's not the same. It includes an extra word worth of information. The two zero at the end. It looks like this must be the union of a grid and two bytes that's my guess okay oh that two two comma zero could be a version number okay 
So now this uh, this static structure here, an RPC client interface begins with the size of its cell, has two of those GUID slash version I bet. Now that 253A blah blah blah, that's my I'm pretty sure that's that's my um, identifier. Yeah, two five three A and version one, right? If we go if I change this to one point seven Run the same command. I bet you in the end you're going to see a 7 in the same spot. There, there it is. See? So these last two bytes are a version. And I don't know what this object is, but it must be the same one as this. It's an RPC transfer syntax object. Fair enough. Uh, RPC interface handle. Hello version 17C. Interface spec it is uh, a reference. No. It's a pointer to a hello well, to this object. Okay. Externally, there is a stub for description stub dash binding handle uh, is uh, just a static. Not defined here, but I could say equals no. But that's automatic. The uh, operating system puts a zero here when you load any program. Anything at global scope is initialized to zero. Well, if that's always been the case for DOS and Windows, I don't know about other operating systems. If that's part of the C standard, I don't know. Hello prop has no const modifier. Um, so this hello prop on the client side says client call to passing in. Uh, let's see now. MIDL proc format string. What was that? Oops. Here. What was that got in there? Some flags. Uh, a bunch of flags. Um, stack size slash offset. Now offset equals four. If that has to do with the amount of stack. Uh, required to make the call four would just be enough to contain a return address uh, don't know what this is these um, these are are definitely fun functions and uh, they take they must convert things to shorts. Makes sense. 
and the offsets are actually given here. So these are short, right? Two. Okay, now this one's a long. And then short, 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 short. Now the rest are short. So, okay. What the size of these are is not, no, you can't tell by looking here. They don't tell you. Oh, no, right. These are one byte because this is at offset two. But wait a minute, what about this one? <laughs> Maybe that these offsets don't count. This one. This has to be at least two, at least two bytes, and at most two bytes. So therefore, it, it, this is two bytes, and uh, this is. It's not an array, it's a single stroke. It's just ignoring that. Alright. Oh, there's a lot more. Some more. Oh, this is another. This here is a. I see. Each of these corresponds to one procedure. This is hello pro. Okay. Flags and uh, some information about the procedure and then here is a no yet another procedure uh, oh parameter okay this here is a parameter and i suppose the thing that parses this knows there's a parameter to read in next so that when it finishes a when it reading in this parameter bit, it knows it's now either at the end or at the beginning of another struct. This one has no parameters, and it just ends with zero. This here, not sure. I'm wasting time trying to work it out. Let's go back to the help file. <clears throat> oh, that's just our file. Oh, I added this bit here in the end. When I was reading through it on the web page, uh, I checked to make sure that I included everything that was there and didn't miss anything. And um, this particular page had some entries from the community. The forward declarations do not appear in the generated H file when the MIDL compiler is invoked from the command. Is that true? Forward. Community edition. Forward declarations do not appear in the generated H file. For what? The allocator or something? No, these these are declared. Maybe it's a ver version problem. Yeah, no. I I have I have those. I have that here. Except it's RPC user star, whereas uh, this one. Or you can see far the difference. There's no far point. There are no far pointers. In, there's no such thing as a far pointer in Win32 or Win64. There could be. 
but there, there isn't. Uh, it's just a flat memory model that's seen before. Uh, these are these are here. So the community may have been correct, and this may have been um, fixed. Um, I don't have a date on here when this was entered in. They also do not appear in the second generated H file. No, that's what I was just looking at. Oh, where are they not? The generated H file. Oh, underscore HH. See any underscore HH? There is no such. Don't know what we're talking about. All right. <clears throat> So that seemed to work fine. Now there is a make file. Hello C, hello S, and then make file. Well, we'll copy. Let's look at look at them in order. Do I already have such a thing? If I did, it did not get killed. Okay. Client application. So here's an explanation of the client application. Uh, the example below is from the same Hello World application in the <laughs> uh, omitted from the software development kit. Hello CC. The Hello CC source file contains a directive to include the MIDL generated header file Hello H, and within Hello H. Or further directives to include RPCH and this, which contain the definitions of the RPC runtime themes, hello prod, shut down, and data types that the client and server applications use. The NIDL compiler must be used with the example below. Because the client is managing its connection to the server, the client application calls runtime functions to establish a handle to the server and to release this handle after the RPC calls a complete term. The function RPC string binding compose combines the components of the binding handle into a string representation of that handle, I see, and allocates memory for the string binding. Function RBC binds from string binding creates a server binding handle called this for the client application from the string. So you, these functions turn as any normal human being would do take a some kind of binary data and because we want to transmit things possibly over a network that uh, turn them into strings and vice versa now that would have been what was that Oh, hello, C. That would be they're talking about this. Okay. 
Now let's look for that um, RPC string binding. Not in here. Well, here it is. In main. Hello, CC. Oh. Oh, that, that's not this thing. Now, where did this file come from? Maybe we just have to write it. The actual application for the client. Okay. So, let's have a look at this app so far. RPC status, that's what... I think that's the same analogous to a uh, Win32 error code or um, NT status if they all use the same numbers. Uh, uh, protocol sequence, etc., etc. This is the one you met, just mentioned. String binding compose. A UUID. Let's explain here. Create a string representation of a handle. <clears throat> UUID not specified because we're assuming there's just one. I remember reading this before. Version of the hello interface. Otherwise, we'd need to be more. I added that bit. Otherwise, we would need to specify uh, this UUID. But if you look up here, it's just set to null. And their comment is the same. I only added this little bit. So we don't need to specify the universally unique identifier if we happen to know that there's just one interface with that name. Two, does not specify a network address because we're assuming a local host machine, which is the default. So the, the default is that it's a remote procedure call, but the it's like 127.0.0.1, basically. Three, a protocol sequence, a, a character representation of the underlying network transport mechanism. In this case, name pipes. So the protocol sequence string is this name something something underscore name pipe. Now, it doesn't actually say it here. I wish it would be, it would be clearer to put them in. Literally, protocol sequence. Yeah. Right? With the uh, meaning still inside here. No. Network address? No. Endpoint. Okay. Now this is the name pipe. This is a um, 
Actually, is that correct? I thought there should be two slashes. I guess not. And name pipe. I've used name pipes before. I know a bit a thing or two about them. Oops. It's like a file. However, um, it's not a file. It's a network thing. It's a network, uh, like an almost like a network port or something. It's a kind of file that when you write data to that file, it that data is then transmitted on uh, the network. It could be a local area. No, I think it's only a local area network, LAN, and um, the second, this here is like a directory, but that directory is a special name that somebody else on the network can read from. Like they can open this same pipe slash hello and start reading from it and the, the characters that they read in will be the same characters that somebody ha has written to that pipe. Okay, it's very simple actually. And options none. Oops, down. I've lost myself. And now an address to a string binding, which uh, is initially no, but it's going to be filled. Just say um, address of no, but it's not address of no, it's a, a, it's a valid pointer and it's it's like when you make a con interface or something and you pass a pointer to a pointer and a returned pointer uh, is placed at the address you specify. Alright. And this thing uh, takes from a string value, which is the thing that we just retrieved, and converts that into a numeric like a numeric value, a handle. So that's this combination of calls, right? The composing of um, identifier hello uh, network protocol address local machine and various options is converted into a string representation of a handle that has been created handle value is just a number in order to turn the string representation of that handle into a, a valid handle, we call that. That's very simple. Now, try. There's a. It's calling hello proc with a string. Okay. That could have been supplied. Oh, let's see. You have to declare it up here. Well, not really. We can put brackets. I'd rather have it declared here where we're going to use it. Anything else? We free the string binding. Okay, the, the now that could have probably been done immediately following the 
convert it to handle and then free the handle and then exit its status really they should put this here to indicate it's an error or we'll call it error or something okay now this could be return zero as well instead of exit zero and that could be return status whatever so there's nothing to this right except what, what's this try accept thing right and this shutdown now let's explain that here In the call to uh, bind and compose, the parameters must affect a red dot. Just one implementation of the hello interface. In addition, the call does not specify a network address. The application is using the local host machine. The protocol sequence. is a character string that represents the underlying network transport. The endpoint is a name which is specific to a protocol. It depends on the kind of protocol. In this example, we're using name types. So the protocol sequence is something to do with name types. And the name of the endpoint is that. They Put quotes. I don't know what's the best way to write this. This is what in not if it's not a C string, that's what it would be. Use a single quote to indicate it's not a C string or not subject to the C compiler's rules. The actual remote procedure calls, hello clock and shutdown, take place within the exception handler. I wonder what that funny character was. Let me hang on a sec. Okay, it's nothing. It's, it's just a dash, but it's um. It's not a regular dash, it's one of those bold, long dashes. A set of macros that let you control exceptions that occur outside of the application code. Now, what does that mean? Hmm, another second. Um, let you control exceptions that occur outside the application code. The RPC run on the leap that for a minute. The RPC runtime module reports an exception control passes to the block. And this is where you would insert code to do any cleanup. To exit gracefully after an error. This example the program Simply informs the user that an exception occurred if one does. If you do not want to use exceptions, you can use the AC webinar, ACF attributes, status, and fail to report errors. After the remote procedure calls are completed, the, the client first calls. Right, free the string. Note that once the binding handle has been created, the client program can free a string handle. What? Note that once the binding handle has been created, free 
the stream button again. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying before. We could have released that stream earlier on. Huh? I'm sure that S is from a failed control S. Uh, so this was a generated thing. This is our program that we're just writing. And it goes like this. Uh, we obtain a handle. A client handle. An RPC client handle. And we would like to run a remote procedure. Uh, how about this? Yeah. Not status. That uh, gives me a reason for this scope. Uh, here's the string that we would like the remote the server to print. Try accept. This is, must be. Uh, I could look it up and see, but I, I'm pretty sure it probably looks like this, right? Well, I'll, I'll look it up now. Yeah. Okay, I found it, and uh, I saved it here. Here's what I got out of the header files, uh, the RPC header file, whatever, whatever it was, I forget. It's exactly like I thought. It's just a regular try, a regular accept, and there are a couple others. This is just a bracket. Um, and there's no difference between try finally because of you know the number defines for my system. Uh, uh, it, it comes out. It comes out that uh, these are just regular old tries. So I can certainly just do this. Uh, what is success? Except one, right? Yeah. If you recall, okay, all, all they've got here is a, is a bracket. No, and accept. Where is accept? Right, accept expression. If, if you wanted to. Right. One means um, execute handler, it turns out, I believe. If, I remember, if memory serves, uh, this is exception. And that means if there is an exception, it's going to go in, into here and um, do this stuff. Uh, another thing is you can say continue search recall, and that will not go. <coughs> it won't go into here, uh, and it'll go to the next uh, except the, the next one up in the chain. The next except catch block, and see what that one wants to do. This here is just a bracket. Right? It should match up. There must be a bracket above here. There is. Right. Yeah, this here is an amazing element. Being consistent with them, that's what their, their intention was. Okay, so there's nothing unusual <coughs> going on here. Uh, freezing string. Uh, you can turn on this is error. Uh, you turn that error. Um, 
this status being used over and over again, which is not such a good thing. Uh, well, whatever. It's a pretty general sounding name anyway. Nothing specific about it. But see, I would have assertions here. And if I see uh, assertion failed status, that doesn't tell me anything, you know, it doesn't generate anything useful in my log file. What I, I would do is, let's say, uh, RT, RDC status uh, error finding free. And then I would say, using my macro, like that, right? Then when it fails, what I get receive in my log file, I've been working on logging my errors and warnings. Uh, so I now have a log directory. In my log file, I'm going to see binding free failed, right? And that's much more informative than status. But anyway, it's a simple example, and we're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to understand. And there's nothing, uh, as far as this file, that's pretty understandable. No, that's probably a long time already. Let me see. Way too much time. Okay, so the next one we'll to look at will be uh, the uh, analog, uh, the server side corresponding to this here. Okay, see you.